Well, there's welcome to the totally awesome fishing show again on this one. I'm going to be going fishing small creeks, small streams, small rivers. Call it what you will. Using, yes, a pair of waders, hopefully dry patched. All waders eventually get leaked. These are 35 years old. Those waders got a few patches on them. If they don't leak, I'll still be using them. Now you can see there the sort of swims I'm looking at. Trees overhanging. Ideal for catching big fish from. And of course you've got to get in there very carefully without slipping. And I'm okay getting in here because you can see this is a chalk stream, only a small one, but I can actually see the gravel bottom. I'm traveling very light and I'm just using for the bait, plain old bread. That's all I'm using, one of the best baits I think you can ever get to fish fresh, water your own lakes or rivers. I mush it up, but do remember when you're mixing your ground bait up that you can put the water in, but I'm afraid you can't take it out. If you put too much in, you're going to make it sloppy and it won't hold together properly. So once you're in the rivers, you should be able to hopefully see the bottom or use a stick to judge what sort of depth you're going through. And I'm trying to get down here from an upstream position, working my way downstream. I've walked upstream, got in the river. I don't want the fish to see me. And there's been other anglers along there, but they cannot fish these swims with an ordinary fishing rod. I have got a six foot, very light IMX um, carbon spinning rod. It's ultra light, again, 30, 40 years old. And I'm trickling in little pellets, little, little balls of ground bait there of this mashed up bread. Now, of course, it's very, very sloppy. I've mushed it up. So as soon as it hits the water, it's starting to break up. Anything heavier actually trundles along the bottom and then breaks out further downstream. But I've first got to work my way under that overhanging trees there and down into a position whereby I can actually work the fishing rod. I'm not fishing at the moment. I'm trying to get into position above the fish, above the swim that I want to cast into or drop my bait into. And I'm working my way downstream, which I couldn't possibly cast here, would I? I'm going to get tangled up every single shot. Throw a little bit more bread in, just get it down, going down the intervals because sometimes other anglers haven't even thrown bait into these swims. So the fish, if it's not fish for a lot, won't know what the bait is. Any offending branches that are in the way, it's all in the winter, this they're going to be in the way where you can see them, you can't get the rod through. I just snap them off, I can walk through it. It's a tiny rod, I couldn't fish this with a normal fishing rod 10, 12 feet long. Long, it's impossible. And just look how high the river's been up in flood there. Well up, probably up to my waist in winter floods. And there's the rubbish. I've managed to balance my bucket on the top there. I'm gonna throw another bit of bread in. Don't forget, with ground bait, people often say in the winter, it's certainly in England, they say, only throw your bait in on a little and often basis. Well, I sort of disagree with that because if it's not fished a lot, the river or stream or creek will wash that bait downstream straight away. It goes past the fish. If they don't grab it straight away, it's gone down, they've missed it, the fish behind them is going to get it. So I find, let them know you're there. That's my saying. Put enough in to let them know you're there. So the idea is, throw these pellets of bread in, get them going, wham, I'm straight in and I pull out. Oh joy, oh wonders, what a good job the sound was not. The language probably wasn't very good. I mean, it doesn't matter because again, I'm in a position whereby I can hopefully feed them up. Nobody else would have probably put a bait right past that uh, particular overhanging tree stump there. I've got a fairly chunky float on there because I want to be able to hold it back in that fast current. And I've got about four, five, six BB shot on there very large piece of flake but I only pinch the actual flake around the hook on the eye of the hook not around the bend or the point so nearly every trot down every run down with the flow after I strike or go to bring it back um, I'm going to find it washes off it's just the way it is with bread if the bread comes back on the hook when you want it back against a fast current like this then you've squeezed it on too hard and that means if you do get a take and strike a fish you're going to pull out of his mouth
So here we go through again with a little pinch of bread on there. Throw one golf ball side piece in and just drop your bait in as close to that as you can. Preferably upstream on it because you want the ground bait to go through first. You want the fish to feed on it and then with their confident feeding they see your bait just behind it and hopefully they're going to snaffle it and take that one as well. Got a fish on guys, got a fish on. Oh, that's a nice chub, big chub. Big chub, I've just missed one that first trot down. He's hanging in this current, this fast current there. Wow, look at the size of this fish. Look at the size of this chub on a spinning rod. I might, although I've got the net here, I might be able to what we call hand him out. I'm gonna just gently walk him upstream a bit. Let's get these sticks out of the way. Here we go. We're gonna try it, we're gonna try it, we're gonna try it. No, he didn't like that. He do not like. Got him! Oh, look at this fish. Look at this fish, people. From a swim that I might not have been able to fish if I'd been from the bank. Real beauty. Thanks to that bread down there. That's some nice looking chunks. I tell you what, guys, I thought I'd lost it. You know, once I miss that first fish, I thought my chance had gone. Let's just put him back down there. He is gone. Brilliant. Even a chance of a second one, that is a result. And it shows you that wading can actually work. Now then, let's get a bit of bread in there again. That was a piece of crush that time. I'm gonna to toss it in a little bit further up, up here. So it's, it's a faster current, you see, so it's just gonna actually take longer to reach the bottom and go down and that was a big piece of crust and to allow for that piece of crust being more buoyant I actually uh, moved my shot down a bit look there's my shot here's my float there as you can see my float I've got 6bb which I would normally use what they call shirt button style which is tagging it all the way up here nice and level but I've got just 1bb about six inches from the hook and then I'm going to put a piece of crust on again. I'm going to try that again. Throw that piece off. About an inch long. And you can see there maybe how I just pinch that base of it round. I better give him another little teaser. Out we go. Follow that one up straight away. I just can't quite get the angle on the rod. But listen, I can't grumble. Here we go, here we go. It's in the zone right through the zone and looks like out the other side well at least i caught one fish anyway it's something save the proverbial blank and you know what the other thing is these waders aren't leaking yet which is good news there we go i feel there might even be another chub in here guys nice big piece of flat and the thing is you don't get pestered by the small fish doing this you get a bite from a chub or nothing at all i can't get an angle i need to be striking right handed but you never know it could go down at any moment maybe a tricky old fish sometimes a chub missed him that might be up at the back there it shallows up and there's some ripples way way down the bottom there that tells me it's only about six inches deep but one thing I will say though, it's provided me a problem striking with this little spinning rod. In fact, it's pretty good for manoeuvring around all these trees. Look, I'm absolutely in no man's land. It's a no fishing zone as far as bank fishing is concerned. Let's have another go, piece of flake going through. Oh, might have been on their heads a bit if there's anything left there. I've got to get close to that tree root, but not in it. There, my bread's come off great. It's a downside of bread flake. If you disturb it too much on the way down, it will come off indeed. Well, well, well. About fourth trot down, I fished. First trot, I actually lost one. Here we go. So I've got to let, I've got to keep the rod to the left a bit to be able to strike. I'm amazed there's not another chump back down there. No, that's just where it shallows up. 
they probably need feeding. What a shame I can't get upstream because there's another swim up there that I could run a float through and get really tight into the snag where I know they live. Right, these fish are, are pretty tricky guys. It's a little cheat here Graham's going to use. Got a brief flake on there, okay. Then I'm going to get a pinch of ground bait and squeeze it around the shot. Now this is a little bit squishy, but you get the idea, you get the principle. This one is going down, look like that. There's my hook bait, there's my float. All in one batch, hopefully. Now, let's see if that works. That's an old school trick. Right in amongst the ground bait. The hook bait's going down there. It's just another little totally awesome tip that every once in a while will work. Generally when they get really tricky to catch like they are getting now. So we'll try that one again. Always worth ringing the changes as they're saying. A piece of flake goes on the hook, just like that. I might go a tad deeper. That's the other thing is don't be afraid to change depths. This is a little bit sloppy because I would normally throw it, but as long as I've got some around that bulk shot, you can see when I swing it out, it's all going to be going down together, one hopes. I'm trying to use every method to get a take here. If we can trick them, we will do. And it looks like they might have seen that one before. The other thing is my waders fortunately are not leaking down here, which is good news. My landing net clip is here, that's all okay. I'll keep my spare bread. Now I've got my spare bread in here. Hopefully I'm not crushing the microphone with my other camera strap and it really is a place where you couldn't possibly even fish it from the other bank. It is a waders only job. Well guys, I'm just going to put my rod up here. Hopefully it won't fall in the water. Maybe it will. Let's give it a rest for a second. Yeah, obviously, they're obviously not, uh, not at home at the moment. If they're at home, they're not biting. I think those guys are still fishing up the other end, so that's that swim done. But listen, this is interesting. When you stand down here, look, swing the camera around, look. See where I'm just standing here. I just snapped a couple of twigs off just to give me a little bit more space there. But when you look at it from, let's say, the fishes, I'm going to put the camera down there, look. Put the camera down there, it's the fish's view. Just look if there's any silhouette going along there. If I was fishing from the bank, anywhere up there, against that sunlight, you can see how you can't afford to be silhouetted against the sky. Now, I personally don't believe they see colour, that's me saying that, because if you looked at red, white, blue, yellow, or whatever, against a light like that, well, it's going to appear as a silhouette, isn't it? It's just going to be a black, it's all going to be black. So I've always thought that's what they're going to see, is a silhouette, and they're going to see movement. And let's face it, if you're a chub down in that swim up here, you're used to seeing, let's say, this bough, this tree, you're used to seeing those trees over there silhouetted. You're used to seeing that tree over there, right? You're used to seeing, ah, oh, a great big gap there. So if people were fishing up there and you were down here, it's going to put you on alarm, isn't it? It's going to put you on, uh, on readiness, do not take any bait. And that's why I think wading here like I am, look, I'm right in among, oh God, trees everywhere. I'm right in amongst the trees. I think it's brilliant. I feel really, as they say, at one with nature and you can see where the flood levels come look up here so it'll be well over my waist and I'll be away into that little deeper pool there so I'll just give this little rest I've got my bread down there still keep trickling a little bit in like just like this little bits and pieces it's going to be hard look the other guys upstream have probably came the life out of this uh, bottom end of their way down there so if they were walking up and down this bank here you know literally walking up and down there Obviously can't get in here, but if they were walking up and down, it's going to spook the fish, isn't it? So I'm low down, hopefully they can't see me, although, see the sun going around behind? But again, if you look at it from the, the chub's point of view, I'm probably, if I stand, look, put the camera like this, 
I can see it's in sunlight there, but if I put it about there, I think I'm in silhouette. I think I'm just black. Anyway, they've had a little rest now. Let's have another little go for them, see if we can't get one out. You see what I mean about the uh, small rod? I can just tuck it up in the tree, hang it up there, out the way. Hopefully it doesn't fall in the water and get washed away, otherwise I'd be extremely unhappy because I've had this about 40 years. Right, another piece of bread. I was sort of tempted to shallow it up, but who knows? Just a very expensive miss, that first fish I lost. I think it spooked any others in there, but they've had a little rest for a minute, the float going through. Let's have another little go. No ground bait, it's quite deep. I'm definitely, definitely over depth. I might get lucky, just be nice to get one more fish out, I have to say. Now, I know they're in there, but they're going to be tricky to catch if people have been moving up and down the bank. I might actually go for a really small piece of bread flake, see if there's any dace or anything there. Sounds like some oil needed there, what do you think? A little bit of oil on the reel. Guys, I'm on, I'm on again. It is gotta be a chub, the way this is digging and digging. The thing is, pulling like this, I'm actually pulling the hook away from the fish's mouth. So it's sort of not great, but is it better to catch one fish than nothing at all, I feel so. Oh, he's really going well, I have to say. Come on, babe. There's the float. There's the float. Oh, big chub, big chub. Let's just watch that drag. Look at that fish there. Holy cow, that is a big chub, man. That is a big fish. Look at him, right underneath my feet. He's going to go into my waders. Oh, oh look at that. Just nicked, just nicked there. Come on, mate, out you come and say hello to your Uncle Graham. That's three and three quarter pounds, I would suggest. And it's just hanging there. Do you know what? That's, that's the fact I was actually, I think, resting that swim, just that little rest. So I'll put this up here for a second. I'll turn that round, guys. Get a better perspective on everything. There we go. Bits of wire, bits of microphones coming out my ear. But, boys, a nice chub, great fish, pleased with that one. Two chubs, you know what, that's just worth coming down here anyway, that's worth coming out anyway for that. And look where I'm fishing, look here, in here. I don't suppose another angler has ever waded in here before. Let's get it back. Oh yes. Because it's all oxygenated here, as soon as I let him go, he'll be zooming away, there he is. I can't put the camera under water, but I can still see the fish there. Yes, hanging in the current, look. Boom. Back to that tree root down there. <laughs> what an angle, how do I live with myself? I don't know. How do you guys keep watching me? Right, guys, gonna have a move up. Give them a rest here. Work my way up the stream. Wow. Once you start to go upstream, you realise the current, how fast it is. I don't want to get up, up the bank here because it's going to uh, spook the fish. I feel anyway, so I just work my way up slowly. Another thing you can do, look, down here, I don't know if I can get this camera down. You can stir up the bottom with your boots like this. Look at the mud coming up and all that's food going down there, so that's like free ground baiting. You've got to do it up, well upstream from your swim, though. Man's plastic yet again. See, and here's a good spot to, to, to get my boot down there. I can stir it all up. You might be able to see the colour in the water, look. I was just 
plough my boot around. This is chalk stream, so it's going to be very clear anyway. You can see the colour I'm making down there? So that can get the fish on the feed as well, stirring up. Stirring up the bottom of your boot. Saves ground baiting, sends bits of food down, little insects all the way down there. Colours it all up. I'll come back to the swimmer, I might try that. Let's get out anyway. Ah, somebody put a rock there for me, how convenient. Now, that's going to have to come up. Uh, up, 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 and yes, away. So there's something to eat. A man of many pockets. Hmm. Even though your weighing weight is not in the water, I can't help casting every little nook and cranny I can on small rivers. My goodness, that really surprised me. I didn't know they were chub in there. Another swim learn, giant piece of crust. Let's get him back. Wow, not a bad session, is it? actually think that the river's coming up. I know it'll be coming up <clears throat> tomorrow because it's uh, big time rain coming in. Two days later, more rain coming in. I can see it's really pushing through here. I'm gonna work my way back down where those guys were. Might be long enough to rest the swim, I don't know. If they've been there all day, well, what can I say? Been hammered. But can I get to a position that they couldn't get a a bait through to. See, they, they built these in the river. I don't know if you can see this over there. A V, a V of trying to get it for brown trout spawning. It's like a big pike down there, but it's not. It's weed, stream of weed, so deceptive. I've had a few throws in there, nothing. So I'm going to work my way down again. Going probably around these shallows here. There's a couple of swims worth a shot if I can get in with the waders and I can run the float down. Straight, there's a classic chub swim through there. Just pointing over there, you can see the edge of that tree in there. Just a little bit fast, I feel. If you did get a take from a chub, it's liable to be at the back end just there, where it sort of slack, slicks off a little bit and slows up. Getting late in the afternoon, I've only got a little bit. That's the only bread I've got left. I've got to use some of that for ground bait. See if I can get in here. Get some in there. I've used the crust of the bread first to sort of slop up. I want to keep myself at least three slices back for bait. I've got to watch I don't crush this microphone. At the same time, another good advantage of waders, you can get in there and you don't have to risk about getting a booty. Mix this stuff up. I should have bought a whole new loaf, but who cares? Bait is bait. You could put, I've, put, I've used bits of cake, I've used... All sorts of rubbish bits of leftover bacon cut up with scissors. Fish will eventually, if they're hungry enough, like humans, eat anything. That's nice and wet, that should sink. Good bit of slop. Right, where can I get in? Where can I get? I want to get up for there somewhere. Oh, look at the heron up there. Now he was going to come in here, so that tells me there's some fish there. It's late afternoon and he wanted to get in here. Put this in my jacket. 
get myself organised. Where can I sneak in here? Right, I've had to change batteries. Battery change is done. Probably run out of memory card next. The last thing I need to do is drop this in the water over the neck, making sure not to crush anything. Let's get some bread slop going in there. Haven't got a lot to a lot of time left. You see the sun up there is going down and they give really really loads of rain tomorrow. I guess that's why those other angles are there as well. Is they know this is gonna flood. So I get all this bait in. Right, let's see if we can get in this river. Just check this out. I'm gonna come in probably further further up here and check the depth. I could do without getting a booty. Oh, I'm up. I'm in. I am indeed well and truly in. Doesn't hurt disturbing all this muck coming down because pretty sure that might help the uh, the fish feeding. I just want to take my time. I do not need to trip. Work my way down. Hmm. It's deeper there than I thought it was. Let's pull the pull the old. Uh, waders up a bit. Oh, There's a lovely lot of uh, muck I'm stirring up there. Now I'm going to sneak down here and this way I can get right past that piece of rubbish I'm hoping. Throw it out there and actually hold it back. Maybe I might be able to get under that piece of rubbish. I've no idea. It's probably going to get nothing because they may have hammered the life out of it. There, look out, I can hold that right past the edge. Now I'm in the swim, in the swim, in the swim, in the swim. Anybody at home there? And the answer to that is no, nearly got off. Float in the air. I feel it's worth another go. Absolutely worth another go. That was a nice straight run through the float, which I could probably not get if I was if I was bank fishing, because I can get out right over here and hold the rod out to the right. Let's have another go, see if I can't get right by those rushes and then I can hold it back. I wish that sticking up piece wasn't there because that is absolutely plumb on where any fish would be. I'm holding it back so that the bait goes through before the float, now I'm just going to let it run through now. Full pelt, not holding it back. There is nobody at home. You never know, I caught that last chub completely freakily. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to work my way further downstream there. Maybe I might just sh shallow that a tad. And then have one more run through here with a slightly smaller piece. Well, perhaps not that small really, but one more go through. I'd love to be able to get and snap that other piece off. It's just so annoying. I'll take a gamble. I don't want to move the float this time. No, he's got the snake. Oh, he's out. He's out, he's out, he's out. Anybody there? Anybody at home? No. When you go to come in, just make sure you don't trip. Because look, it's rushes, but it's still pretty boggy. Take your time, that's it, we're out. Now, of course, by wading, I'm gonna be almost treading in the, any fish in that swim. This one hasn't got quite, quite, quite so much sticking up there. Whether we're gonna uh, get any joy here, who knows, let's get a bit of bait in. There we go. I'll tell you what I do, I put a, as you can see it, I'll twist the camera down. I put my rag here, a hand white rag, just inside the top of the waders there. Hopefully you can see that, just there. Easy to get at. Right, bait up and away we go again.
because I've come downstream and I've hooked one up. I guess you can see him, hopefully I've got him on. Let's backwind him. The net is, I don't know, about six swims up. There's the chub. Here he comes. There he goes. He's still on, he's still on, he's still on. Here he comes. Here he comes, here he comes. A bit of weed in his mouth. And got him. There we go, hooks out. There's a fish. Hopefully you can see him. Make sure we've got the camera straight. Hopefully you can see him there in the light. Lovely looking fish. Very fat, very chubby one this. I guess he's about two and a half pounds, something like that. Big belly. Presumably, it's full of my bread. But there we go, I'm wading in the middle of the river. I've got a chub. And that's what it's all about. Away he goes. Yes, get in. It's getting cold, I'm running out of bread. I think I'm going to be trying just down here. You can see down there that overhanging willow, which obviously you couldn't fish with a match rod. But I can probably get below that and track on down to that, well, basically down to that swim where I had those fish to start off with. So I've had two up here, two further down. I see no reason why, even with the last bit of bread I've got, that I shouldn't be able to winkle at least another one out. My only misgiving here is you can see it narrows down. It's definitely rising, the river. It's definitely rising. Might be a tad too deep for me. So I'm going to put it on the head cam, keep my hands free, and see if I can't get down in there. Wish me luck. Oh, stuck in the mud. Stuck in the mud. Be stuck in the water soon. There we go. Ah, oh, yes. That's cool. That is cool. Look at the mud I've stirred up there, guys. That help any fish down there. Just gonna push my way right through these. Where I'm walking, I wouldn't think a float has ever been. As long as I can see the bottom, I'm okay. I know it's a shallow sort of river, but at the end of the day, I should be using a wading staff, really. There we go, look at this swim here. Now in the summer, I could get right back up here and just run a bait, even ledger a bait there, and a chub will come out from there. No question of that. I mean, it's a good swim, but look how these trees just fall over, and it, I'll take you right in here and show you. Absolutely, look at that. All backed up there. In fact, we could do that plane to drop a bomb in here to try and free it all off. But if they cut all this back, all this would go through. You could still have a good swim here, but this is just going to back up, back up. And what happens is that we'll push the current, speed it to the left over there, as you can see. And then it's going to start undercutting that bank. So I don't know why the powers that be who are supposed to look after rivers don't come and saw this one out. Because that's what happens. It backs up there, undercuts this, and then eventually it makes it all shallow and fast. As you can see, there is a complete wad of rubbish there. Now here we are, I'm coming right back in. Now look how that, I said how that cutting away is cleared the gravel here because it's coming so fast. You can see it in front of me. It's absolutely cleared all the gravel away. Man, there's got to be chub under that lot. Oh my god, need a stick of dynamite to get that one out. Right, I'm getting down to where I hooked up before. And because I'm working my way downstream, then uh, hopefully all my stirring up bits are going to put me in with a chance. They're going to, if there's one chub, I mean, I've had a really good session. I've only been here two hours. But by getting into swims, Possibly put and float through at a different angle. Paid off big time. Four really nice chub, like not sort of pound fish. Fish to four pounds. Right. Let's get in here and get my, my bait box just up here. Balance it in here. A little bit of bait going in. Over we go. I'm chucking it right in the margin so I want it to trickle out, you see. 
it swirls around there, bumps along the bank before it comes out. I'm just hoping, because I've left, rested this for an hour, that there might be... Oh, I don't think you're going to get many up here. What am I going to catch up here? Because that's right. Blackbirds, robins... I don't like wasting bait. Right. Here we go again. Going to go through shallow first. And then gradually work deeper. In the hope there might be one chub left. I'm down to maybe three slices of bread. Most of those are crumbly ones. Come out. That's it. Got it. Are we going to get lucky? Here we go. Here we go. Over. All that bread's already gone down there. Going to have to strike fast if one takes it. Should be early on. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. And no. Okay, be like that then. I was just going to run it to the end of the swing. Sometimes there's there's dace, trout, roach, everything can lay at the end of the uh, end of the swim. I've made this a little bit wet. I don't think it's going to do my old trick of moulding it around that bulk shot. I think it's too wet. It probably will fall off. Some might stay attached, so who knows? There we go. It falls off. Well, I'm going to follow that lot down anyway. You never know. There might be a chub here, right? Absolutely in front of me. If they're hungry late in the evening, or late afternoon, early evening, I should say, they will swing out from over there, which is where they're living. Missed that, if that was a bite. Oh, it's a fish. Oh, my God, it's a fish. My God, I thought it was snagged. What the heck is this? Look at the bend in this rod. Look at the bend. Well, this is a weird... Oh, he's come off. Jesus, what was that? That felt very unchub like I've no idea what that was. That is so annoying. I hate losing fish that you can't see. God, jeez, bloody annoying. Might have to run another one down the inside here. That was annoying, annoying. I thought it was just dragging bottom. It was a most peculiar fight. It wasn't like a chub. I wonder if that was a big brown trout. Probably would have come out of the water though, I guess, if it was a trout. About there it was. It's obviously not there now. It could have been a foul hooked fish. It felt right peculiar, I have to say. On guys, on, 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 on. Oh, digging, digging, digging for the tree roots. I've got a mouthful of bread. What is that fish? It's got to be another. Oh, beautiful chub. Put that bread back, might need it. A lovely chub, I thought it was done. Here he is. Look at this fish. Oh, three, three and a half pounds. What a cracker. What a cracker. Got him. Do you know what? I thought I was done. I thought I was finished. But no. Chub number five. Got to be two and three quarters, something like that. Just shy of three pound, I'd say. Oh, what a session. There can't be another one in there, surely. I'd better give them some of this lucky sloth bread, just in case. I not believe it, I'm on again, the float didn't go two feet. It didn't go two feet. Oh my God. I'll tell you what, this small short rod is doing the business, big time. Big time. Look at this chub, look at it. Absolutely. It's gone back one in case, in case something bizarre happens. Hopefully you guys are seeing this. And here and it, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Oh, I'll use a short one up the tree. I need to bring him up here a bit. There he is. Hopefully you can see him. Look at that, guys. Wading, don't even need to get the net. Just hand lift them out. No stress to the fish. The hook virtually fell out of that one. Beautiful chub. English float fishing at its best. Well, there we go. I'm running. I'm running out of bread. Big time. Six chub. Six chub. Those other guys have been all day. Had nothing. I've been here two hours. Crazy, crazy fishing. Thanks to the waders. Yes, having trouble seeing the float now. Got polarizing glasses on, guys, but. They're okay for seeing through the water when it's bright, but as it gets darker, no, not quite so good for 
Now well, guys, I'm down to about four bits of bread. So I'm just trying to get the best I can out of it and I've got to put some of it into the bait bucket and stiffen up my pace a little bit just to try and get it to hold onto those lead shot a little bit longer and go down together all at once. I don't know whether it will or not. Just a little bit too wet still. Look. It won't quite won't quite hold. Try and get a bit of ground bait to hold or bread is my ground bait to hold around that last couple of lead shots. There we go. It doesn't fall off. It could trick a chub. Because that's going to break up. Just give it a little tug to break it off and then follow it down with my float. Missed. Oh, damn it. That was a chub. And I missed him. Right, guys, I'm out of bread. No bait, no more fish. Six big chub. I'm going to leave the jungle swim. Work my way back up now. Tired, feet getting a bit cold. I've got three pairs of socks on. I can actually reach swims. Nobody else can reach. And it's paid off big time, as you can see. Tired now. I don't want to drop anything in the water. Cameras, wallets, car keys. So thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. That's a few tips in there anyway. Get yourself a pair of waders, give it a go. Be careful out there. Get a wading staff or a landing net pole in front of you when you walk downstream. If it's a rising river, possibly best. I mean, this is very, very small. Not to do it at all. Check with local people. Check the local tackle shop. Give it a go. Honestly, well worth doing. And don't forget, as well as watching our fishing show, to watch the totally awesome outdoor show. I'm off. Ow! Time to get out and oh don't drop anything Graham don't lose anything Christ and he went back in then that would be fun wouldn't you laugh wouldn't you laugh wouldn't you laugh Jess I'm off home see you guys again <laughs>